This is Radio TV Follow Nut, and we have an Audiotronics Model 304E classroom record player torn apart on the bench. This is from 1976, and I recently picked it up at the flea market for a somewhat reasonable price. Back in the 90s, I saw these types of record players all the time, and I could get them anywhere from three to five bucks because all the schools were getting rid of them at the time, and nobody really wanted them. Well, now thanks to eBay and the resurgence of uh, uh, records, they rarely ever show up locally anymore, and when they do show up, they usually want 50 bucks for something that doesn't even work. So, you know, when this one showed up for a reasonable price, I jumped on it. And yeah, my whole thing with eBay is these clowns that when I'm trying to buy something locally, oh, oh well, they sell on eBay for so-and-so. Well, put the thing on eBay and sell it then. I'm at the flea market because I want a deal. If I wanted to pay a big price for something, I'd get on eBay and buy it and not have to leave home. But anyway, not meaning to turn this into a rant session, but here's the tone arm off a of said record player. It's a cheap plastic tone arm. And here's the 89T cartridge holder and cartridge that was in it, which is the standard plug-in cartridge. And as I've talked about in the past, I'm really trying to get away from that type of cartridge. The reason being, they're not $5.95 anymore. They're more like 25 bucks for new old stock LP78 flip variety. And when the needle wears out, you're back to paying 20 or 25 bucks for a new cartridge. Well, I don't like that, so I've been converting some of these to standard ceramic cartridges with a replaceable needle. I normally install cartridges with LP and 78 flip needles, but I don't want to spend much money on this thing, so we took the cartridge out of that Crosley record player that we burned up in a recent video and installed it. I used the Crosley wiring harness and all to make it look a lot neater. And we're going to install it in the record player and see how it does. Now, a couple of potential problems that we're going to have to deal with is number one, this cartridge puts out 1.3 volts. This one here puts out maybe a half a volt. Now I know that don't seem like much of a difference, but it can be a big difference and the result is usually weak and tinny sound unless we modify the amplifier to get a little more gain out of it. And another issue is tracking pressure. This cartridge here, the recommended tracking pressure is something like three or four grams, although Crosley runs on much higher than that. And the 89T tracks at about eight grams. Well, since this cartridge physically weighs more than the 89T likely does, and it's probably going to track as it is heavier than that, so what we'll have to do is modify this counterbalance spring to get it lower. Okay, I've done some work to this little Audiotronics record player off camera, but I'll go over my findings. Uh, this little Crosley cartridge is not going to get it. That's out of the question. And I'll go over what I did to the player to first make this cartridge kind of work, and I'll tell you why I decided not to go with it. First off, I adjusted this uh, gain pot on the amplifier. It's accessible through this hole here. Turned it wide open, and that still didn't give me satisfactory volume levels. So I replaced the 33K ohm resistor that connects to the loudness compensation tap on the volume control with a 470K ohm resistor, and that gave us plenty enough gain, but our our tonal quality was still not great. It was it was just too trebly and not enough bass. So I have this little RCA record player. It's some piece of crap from the late 60s that I had installed one of the recently made Fansteel P226 cartridges in. Well, I don't really like that record player, so I just decided to uninstall the cartridge from that player and install it in this player.
as you can see right there. And the advantage to this is that we have a LP and 78 flip type stylus, so we can play all types of records. And with this cartridge, we had plenty enough gain. In fact, I had to turn the gain pot down a little bit, and I went back to the 33k ohm resistor on the on the loudness tap of the volume control, and it plays nicely now. It doesn't have quite as much bass as the 89T had, but it's still very listenable and it doesn't sound quite as muddy as it did with the 89T. And it will play these bass intensive records now without skipping all over the place. Uh, just a word about these P226 cartridges. I've been using them for years. In fact, I was buying them back in the 90s from the local parts house for $5.50 each, I think. Well, unfortunately, they're not $5.50 each anymore. They're more like 20 bucks. but, you know, you do what you got to do if you want to fix these old record players. Now, I get most of my cartridges either from eBay are mainly from the Voice of Music website and I've noticed the P226 cartridges that I've ordered in recent years seem to have about the same output as these Crosley cartridges. In fact the Crosley cartridge is rated for 0.3 volts. The 226 is rated for a half a volt. Now I believe the old Varco TN4B cartridges that these are patterned after actually put out about a volt, but that was the ones from back in the 70s. Well, the newest P226 cartridges that I've gotten from the VM website seem to be hotter than the ones I was getting, say, six or eight months or a year ago, and that's good because they more closely match the output of the old 89T cartridges, which means less work for me as far as having to modify amplifiers. Now, I'm not saying that there will be cases where I won't have to modify the amp. I mean, really no two amp is alike as far as from one brand to another on these classroom record players. So, you know, there will be times I'll have to make some slight modifications, but since this cartridge appears to be hotter than what the former versions were, then I should be able to use it without having to do a whole lot of amp modification. About the only thing I don't like about these newer cartridges is it seems like the stylus retainer clip is not very tight. I mean, it holds the stylus in place, but it's very, very, very touchy, and if you're not careful, the stylus will is very easily moved out of position and you'll have something like this so when playing a record you want to make sure the stylus is where it's supposed to be. Now on a more positive note it seems like the cartridge connector pins seem to be more stable on some of the older P226's that I got and the Crosley type cartridges the pins were loose, physically loose, and I've even had some that would even push up into the cart the body of the cartridge when I would attempt to connect the the clips and it got so I'd have to put a dab of glue on the pins to hold them in place before connecting them. Well the pins on these newer cartridges seem to be more stable so maybe they got their act together there but still if you order a new cartridge I'd still pay attention to the pins, and if they seem a little bit loose, put a dab of glue on them to hold them in place before you slide the connectors over them. Here we are with a 78. They got Breathe the Man Blues! Breathe the Man Blues! Right about And that's Rhythm and Blues by the McGuire Sisters, in case anybody wants to know. We now have a nice 
nice little portable record player that has a better quality cartridge than what it came with originally and a cheaply replaceable stylus. Also, uh, when you flip the needle, you're not actually flipping the whole cartridge, you're just flipping the needle from LP to 78, where the 89T, the whole cartridge holder flips, and I can't tell you how many of these I've fixed, where the wires would be broken, where they solder on to the cartridge holder, and that's from the cartridge being flipped back and forth. Of course, it's still a little bit heavy tracking, so it's not something I'd play my best records on, but if you need just something to play your old beat-up records on, this would be a something like this would be a good alternative, and it would certainly be better than anything that, that's made by that C company that we talk about so much. Actually, this thing's professional grade when compared to a Crosley. He's a 1432 Franco-Pike Circle hero. You can see him every weekend with a car full of kids and snow cones. And the people across town don't know his name, but on Franco-Pike Circle he's king. 1432 Franco-Pike Circle hero. Well, at 535 at the corner of Franklin and Warner. A blue station wagon.